Hi beautiful people, today's video is going to be my November 2021 reflection. We're finally here on the first day of December. I can believe it and at the same time I can't believe it. Fall just crept up on me and I didn't even have a chance to notice sad or seasonal affective disorder. Did I say that right? I just caught colds instead. I noticed the drop in temperature, the gradual drop. Well, it's been going like up and down, but all I did was notice the weather. I didn't even take into account that the seasons were changing. I don't miss the summer that much because I was getting bitten by mosquitoes left and right, but that's pretty much the only reason why I hate the summer. Other than that, summer is my favorite season. I hate the fall. I hate the winter. The spring is decent, but my allergies get so bad, but I hate the fall and the winter because this is the... I don't want to get out of bed because it's way too cold weather. My motivation for YouTube or for work in general has really plummeted and this weather is not helping whatsoever. The days are shorter, the sun isn't even out all the time anymore. Everything has been getting to me. So now I notice sad, I acknowledge it. And as much as it is sad to have sad, life goes on and you just eat. That's what I do. I just eat. That's like the only thing that makes me happy. This month really wasn't that crazy for me. Well, sort of. I think most of my months are really boring because I'm not really doing anything. I went to see my dermatologist, which I did not enjoy. And if you want to know why, you can watch my latest different update video. Long story short, they sent in the other dermatologist that works there because my dermatologist is always booked out. She's well overbooked and they didn't even warn me ahead of time and I definitely don't think that that was fair. I obviously made an appointment to see my dermatologist for a reason and the concerns that I had she didn't even do anything about them. So as far as my eyes go which I talked about in I think my last video I went for my annual eye checkup and turns out that my vision is getting more blurry or blurrier and I'm farsighted. It's frustrating and it's scary because I've always had good eyesight and this doctor that I see now tells me all the time that the backs of my eyes are very healthy and that is thanks to my father. But I hate wearing glasses. They're annoying. I did mention getting new glasses and that's with an updated prescription. It's not really like for vision, it's more to just clear what I see or make clear. So I do have them. The problem is I did not try them on and get them adjusted without my mask on. So the way that they sat on my face was fine until I got home and I wore them for the first time and they actually sit right here on my face and leave that red mark. They also gave me a headache because they put pressure on my face and it turns out it's because those glasses barely have any nose pads. So here I am wearing my older pair and I compared the two to see if maybe I could just wear these but I can't because the updated ones have an updated prescription. <sighs> I'm super bummed out. I really wanted to wear them in my videos, wanted to wear them whenever I turn my camera on and reveal my face on my husband's stream. I got so excited for them, but well, here you go. In the midst of the pandemic, this is one of the things you have to go through. So next time I will take my mask off when I get them adjusted. I actually have older frames and I want to see if they will put my updated prescription in those frames instead. Because the frames that I picked out, like I just mentioned, they don't have, you know, an ample nose pad. So there is absolutely no support. It just like wants to slip down my face all the time. So for now, I will have to enjoy wearing these glasses. And I did say in a previous video that I had to get these readjusted because the arms were squeezing the back of my head and giving me a headache. So I would have to take them off like every five minutes or so. And now they're perfectly fine. And I am really happy about that. So going back to how I I've been super unmotivated to do work. It's not that I hate doing work. You know, I'm, I'm a very hardworking person and I really like to work because, I don't know, to me it's just fun. But I have really been noticing myself 
going downhill with my motivation to work because it's not fulfilling me. Yeah, of course, from time to time, I think about all the things that I could be doing. And then I just, I don't know why, but talk myself out of it. It's not that I think that I won't make it. Let's say I won't have a successful podcast, or if I start streaming on Twitch that I won't have a successful stream, but it's just thinking about if I really want to do those things. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I had a talk with my husband, two separate ones, about becoming a personal trainer. This was something that I thought about many times in the past, especially now that I've been working from home and doing all this YouTube stuff. I have been working out since I was in ninth grade. My gym teacher at the time was the driving force behind that. She had us do so many different forms of fitness during that year. And that was the first time I was introduced to yoga. It was incredible to learn that moving your body and really stretching it could make your muscles quake and work your body out in a way that is just so different and could even be possibly more intense than lifting weights because you're using your body. I was never a sportsy type, but when it came to working out or fitness, I excelled every time. And that was the first time I ever got an A in PE. And my dad was always working out. He's still working out at his age. And I always asked him for fitness tips and how I can perfect my form or better my form. And it just went from there. So it kind of made sense for me to think at some point in my life, should I become a personal trainer? But I talked myself out of it, which is what happened in the second discussion that I had with my husband, only because working out is for me a lifestyle. It is not something that I eat, poop, and drink. It's not everything to me. And that's a good segue into what I want to just briefly mention because I might do a video on it, but it's just how I turned this obsession with working out every day to going back to doing it three times a week. For lack of a better word, I used obsession. I'm not obsessed with working out and I was never like that. I was never obsessed with working out every day, but because of this pandemic and, you know, I've been indoors for the past two years, I started working out every day, especially when I subscribed to Kaboko Fitness and her app that I use. As you know from my community posts, she is my favorite fitness instructor on YouTube. I decided to go ahead and subscribe to her fitness program because she had a free eight-week booty program that she offered to her viewers on YouTube, I think, sometime in the beginning of this year. And I loved how she structured everything. It was every single day except for weekends. It's the same thing on her app, but every day was very short. The longest workouts were 30 minutes and every other day when you would not be doing butt focused workouts was 10 minutes long. I have been using her app for I think less than six months. I'm not even sure, but I have been enjoying it because she lays out all of the workouts every single day, every single month. I did at first start her eight week booty fix program on her app, but that's what I'm talking about with this whole personal trainer thing. Working out to me is not everything. I love to take breaks. I don't want to work out all the time. I find it to be a nuisance. It's not like I have anything better to do. And if I didn't have anything to do, I would work out. But I don't want working out to be everything for me. There are times I just want to eat all day. There are times I just want to sit here and watch stuff. Most of it is eating. And I found that going back, scaling back to three times a week instead of doing it five times a week, I feel a lot better. I definitely have to focus on stretching every day though because I have been working this entire pandemic to finally achieve a front split. And because I dialed back to three times a week, I don't necessarily do my stretch routine on the days that I don't work out. But even with that, I feel like I just have more time to myself because I'm not working out all the time. And my workouts can take over an hour because I do my proper warm up and I do a cool down. And my cool down and stretching routine is like a workout in itself. 
And I will also mention that when you become a personal trainer, you know, obviously you have to have clients. And I wouldn't mind in the future asking for help on how to build a business out of that because being a personal trainer during this time is incredible because you get to work from home and anywhere in the world. You just turn your camera on and make these videos for people on YouTube. You can do stuff on any other platforms as well. But everybody has an app. And to be honest, I don't want to be that creative and come out with so many different workouts. I don't think my brain can handle like being on my toes all the time, you know? I want to work out just to stay healthy and fit. I don't necessarily even want to look a certain way anymore than I used to. You know, there's the whole culture of the hourglass body, but especially having a gigantic ass. And you know what? It's great if you want to do it. But for me, realistically, I'm not going to dedicate all my time to working out. I'm not going to really ever find myself in a gym and whatever equipment I have at home is enough for me. It suffices for my realistic lifestyle of working out when I feel good enough to work out. If you're wondering how I structured like all my workouts when I was doing it five times a week, Kaboko does it really well where she'll do lower body like two or three times a week, abs two or three times a week, mostly twice for abs. And then of course there's like upper body, she can put that with abs. And there's at least one full body workout every week. And I really miss the full body workouts. And I really missed doing full body body weight workouts. That's how I started when I worked out for the first time and I didn't have any equipment. Then I got some equipment from my dad from work. He would give me resistance bands and then I had lighter weights. And then eventually I splurged and bought myself the, oh, I forgot what they're called, the power block weights. Those are incredible because you can adjust your weights. You don't have to have this whole pyramid of weights that take up so much room. And don't forget, I still live with my parents and I live out of this tiny box. So I have to pay attention to what kind of equipment I can store in here. I can lift heavy if I want to, but on the days that I just don't want to or, you know, my mental is not so good, I'm not sleeping well, I don't want to be lifting 20 pounds or doing 40 pounds hip bridges or what do they call elevated glute bridges so basically out of this whole discussion here I talked myself out of becoming a personal trainer and that could be still something I could do in the future but for now I don't have the mental capacity to be that creative and just constantly push out new workouts and all that I can't even keep up with myself Oh, and also now I do three times a week full body workouts. So that way I have ample rest in between my workouts. This is what I used to do before the pandemic. I would just do three times a week full body workouts with or without weights. And that to me is more sustainable than forcing myself to work out five times a week just because I have extra time now. That was a very long category, but next is something that I definitely needed to do. I have been needing to do that for so long and I have not even finished doing this. It's like an ongoing process, but it's purging my email. I was subscribed to so many email newsletters for shopping. I actually, this is so sad to say, unsubscribed from my favorite clothing stores and one of them is Banana Republic. You know, during the holiday season, you just get flooded with emails about all of their sales. And because I was subscribed to Banana Republic, they also subscribed me to Gap and Old Navy. So that meant like triple the emails every single day. I couldn't take it anymore. And I don't really shop at those stores anymore. I had to stop using my Banana Republic credit card. One, because I stopped shopping that much in general, but stopped shopping at Banana Republic and The Gap and Old Navy. But also because the coupons that you get as a member suck. I would just get like $5 or $10. I mean, that is so ass for how much money that you spend there. So I unsubscribe from those. I also unsubscribe from The Body Shop, Express, and Taylor Loft, Cole Haan, which makes some of my favorite shoes, footwear, and even Sokol Glam. I subscribed to Sokol Glam a couple of years ago because I wanted to buy some Korean beauty stuff, but I only ever bought 
like three things from them or maybe even two. I'm not really into Korean beauty stuff anymore. I just buy stuff at the drugstore and whatever luxury skincare I want, I just buy it from Macy's because they have their 15% off beauty sale multiple times throughout the year. Unlike somebody cough Sephora. Sephora is one that I'm kind of like really tempted to unsubscribe from because their sales, they suck. They just as a whole suck. I don't like them anymore. They don't give you the rewards that you deserve as a loyal customer. And I've been with Sephora for I think 10 years. I got that 10 year email. It's so ridiculous because I was thinking like I've been with you guys for a decade and you're not even giving me any special discounts. I mean what the F is that about? But I feel so much lighter. I mean I woke up to like a hundred new emails yesterday because of Cyber Monday but that would be double if I was still subscribed to all the other things. So I just feel so much better. It's not too daunting opening up my phone anymore and seeing like 500 emails that I have to go through. And then of course, let's just briefly talk about that I had diarrhea for three days and one night. I talked about this in my last video. It was crazy. It was very scary. I wasn't sure what was happening because you guys know I don't leave the house. So how the hell did I catch a bug? But just because I don't leave the house doesn't mean that people in my house don't leave the house and then bring something back. But thankfully it's gone. I'm kind of back to normal. My body is still trying to readjust to normalcy. But other than that, I feel a hundred million times better than I did. That was really scary. I was running to the bathroom every one and a half hours, but it was gone just in time for Thanksgiving. And now let's talk about how my Thanksgiving was because holy sh- like I hate being home. I hate it so much because my parents, my family, whatever, they hate me so much. I always get so much crap. I've been pulling my weight because, you know, we've had these talks before about being unemployed and living at home and having your parents financially support you that you know and as a way to give back just pull your weight around the house if you feel bad if you feel guilty which you shouldn't but I understand because obviously I'm with you there try helping around the house whenever you can do grocery runs or go with them when they do groceries if you have a little bit of money pay for things I don't know if you can't like me it's fine like if you have good parents or decent parents they will not ask for money back but they will appreciate that you're pulling your weight around this house and that for me is cooking and cleaning so I decided to sign up for Thanksgiving from HelloFresh and my god I'm going to rate it like the whole Thanksgiving thing on a scale of 1 to 10 1 being oh my god get me the out of here. I'm never going to do this ever again. To 10 being, wow, that went a lot better than I thought. My experience with cooking Thanksgiving dinner was a 1 out of 10. Okay, a 2 out of 10. I will say that because one point goes to my love for cooking. And this is the first time ever that I ever cooked Thanksgiving dinner by myself. I prepared a lot of whatever because when I started with HelloFresh my mom decided to you know because she's a control freak be in charge of the preparation so she she cuts all the stuff and then I just cook it so she decided to prepare a lot of the Thanksgiving stuff which is great but not a lot of it because I had to stick to a game plan and it was insane. I cooked for a total of six hours and I was doing the dishes, you know, in between all of that. I didn't sit once and I did not pee once and I didn't even notice I hadn't peed until I had to pee when everything was done before I had dinner and I couldn't believe that I barely even drank anything during that entire time too because I was doing everything by myself. But I, you know, you guys know what I go through. I've shared a lot on this channel about my family that it's not the greatest. I've always been a good daughter. I don't break rules. I hate breaking the rules. I hate breaking the law, you know? I feel horrible about stuff like that, that I wouldn't even think of doing stuff like that. And I still get yelled at. I still get blamed for a lot of things. I had a shouting match during Thanksgiving, which is why 
my experience bumped down to one out of 10. So that was the other point. It was horrible. I didn't want to quit because I don't do stuff like that. You know, I don't act like a baby, have a tantrum and just like, you know what? F it. I'm not cooking. I'm not doing anything. You guys, you know, go F yourselves. I'm not doing anything anymore. You want to have a Thanksgiving dinner? You want to eat? Then you finish this. I never do stuff like that because I'm not a child. I'm not immature. I keep my composure and I keep going. It's like Gordon Ramsay is yelling at me, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep going. I know he's like helping, but you know, it's just like being yelled at. It's the same thing when you go to work and you hate your boss so much and she's yelling at you constantly, but you're, you're like, you know what? I have a job to do, so I'm going to like ignore you and I'm going to keep going. That's what I do. And that's the other point, the two out of 10. I just love cooking so much. You're never going to see me quit cooking just because you make my life a living hell every time I do, you know? Okay, I talked about that for a while, sorry. And then Thanksgiving though, the meal itself. 10 out of 10, that was delicious. I was so surprised that the Thanksgiving dinner came out like pretty much perfect. The turkey was so juicy on the inside. The white meat was tender. The dark meat was so moist. The outside, the skin was so crispy. I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I thought that the bird was going to take me like over two hours at most three hours to make, it was done in an hour and 45 minutes. And the oven was a complete mess. The sides were just as delicious. I had, I think, roasted delicata veggies. I don't remember what it was called, but it's like squash and shallots together. I made the apple ginger crisp for dessert the day before. And then we had it Actually, we didn't have it on that day because by the time I finished cooking, it was almost 8 o'clock, which I was really surprised about. I was like, my God, we're going to end up eating at 9 p.m. But everything ended up working out because again, I don't quit. Even when somebody is making my life a living hell and I want to quit so badly. Well, I don't really want to, but you know what I'm saying. I just want to walk away. Everything was delicious and everybody enjoyed it everything that they ate. I don't like stuffing. I have always hated stuffing, but for some reason, this stuffing was the most delicious stuffing I have ever had. I am never going to do this again, especially not for four people. And I will tell you why. I signed up for this Thanksgiving feast when HelloFresh gave you two options. One, the turkey was for eight to 10 people. I chose that one when there are only four people in this house. The other one was beef tenderloin for four to six people. And I did not want beef tenderloin for Thanksgiving because you just don't do that, okay? You don't sacrifice the bird because you don't have that many people to feed. Now, I hate myself so much for doing that because I was so hell-bent on having a traditional Thanksgiving, even though this is the first Thanksgiving in my entire life that I did not have with my family, even though I did celebrate Thanksgiving with my husband in Germany, but I don't count that because my family was still together. Now my family is not together. We're never going to celebrate anything ever again together. So this was the first Thanksgiving I wanted to have to keep the tradition going. And yeah, we had a lot of food. I had Thanksgiving leftovers for three days straight. I almost vomited and then we just had to get rid of the rest of it. I know, I suck. I hate wasting stuff. Investing in HelloFresh was the best thing I could have ever done for this family because like my mom would make stuff and there would be so much left over that she would end up throwing it out. And I used to always yell at her for that, but she wouldn't even care about what I said because I guess that's what Asian parents do. So now getting HelloFresh and everything is like portioned. We don't have any food waste anymore. And if there is leftover stuff, we still eat it the next day. So this is the last time I am making Thanksgiving dinner like that, a feast for four people. But obviously if I have like a whole bunch of people, I don't even mind because I've done it. That's the other reason why I signed up for it because I wanted to challenge myself. I love cooking so much and I thought Thanksgiving is a huge challenge. And if you love cooking so much, I seriously recommend challenging yourself to make a Thanksgiving feast. It is so incredible. I know I've been talking about this for so long, and I said incredible like four times now, but it made me feel so accomplished and so proud of myself and super happy. And I felt unstoppable that I could do anything in my life because when I put my mind to something, I accomplish it. 
every single time. That's just the person that I am, which is why my unmotivation or my demotivation to do work or just, I don't know, move on with my life is very disappointing. I'm very disappointed in myself because I know I can do it. I know I can achieve these things and I know I can be successful. I think I'm just trying to navigate this online life Thing that even though it's kind of mainstream now, it's not as mainstream as I would like it to be. I don't know. I'm still hoping that I have an online life career wise. I mean, it would be a dream to be able to do this from anywhere. And with that said, I have one favorite to share with you this month. And I definitely have to share this with you because it is, I think, probably the number one best thing I bought all year. I guess besides HelloFresh. And that's Crocs. These aren't just the normal Crocs. These are the lined Crocs. These have fur in them for keeping your feet super warm during the colder seasons. I had no idea they had lined clogs. They call them clogs, ugh. But I found them right at the perfect time because I think I got these, I don't remember where I got these from, but there was a sale and I had to snag them. They come in so many different colors. I will link them down below. By the way, if you use my links to purchase anything, thank you so much because I might make a commission from that. But I highly recommend that you pick up a pair, either for yourself or for a loved one or for both of you. You will not regret these at all. They are so incredibly comfortable. I know they're ugly as hell, but they really are the perfect shoe. You guys know these Crocs. I've had them on my wall like all year. I was looking up a pair of shoes that I could wear in the house while I cook because I wear my sleep socks all the time everywhere. And you know, you might drop stuff on the floor when you're cooking, but you're also standing on your feet for at least an hour. And my feet were killing me every single time I was cooking. I typed these into Google, boom. Crocs came out first. I was like, there is no way in hell I'm ever gonna buy the ugliest shoes on earth besides Uggs. I just think Uggs are disgusting. I said it, okay? They look like horse hooves. Crocs, on the other hand, they have function, they have comfort, and they're completely waterproof. Okay, not the lined ones. Just try not to get stuff on your lined ones because you can't take them out, unfortunately, and clean them. But the regular ones are incredible. They're waterproof, very easy to clean, and they have grip on the bottom. So they make the perfect shoes, I would imagine, to bring on vacation with you whenever there's a pool. I will be doing that. I will be packing these Crocs with me. There's one caveat, because they have a strap here, you see that the strap stops before the rest of the shoe. You have to size up, especially if you're a half size, you need to go up a size. My husband is an eight and a half, so I bought him a nine. I don't know how they will fit him because he's never owned Crocs before. I just bought them for him for now, so when he comes over, he can try them on. These are size eight, and on my wall here, my original Crocs, they're size seven. When you wear the strap, they fit perfectly if you go a size up. Those, your toes are literally kissing the very top of the shoe. So for six hours straight of cooking and cleaning on Thanksgiving day, my feet did not ache or hurt at all. And that's my reflection for November 2021. I have been filming for like whatever 23 plus 17 is minutes. Insane. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed this reflection. There was no script whatsoever. I hope you guys noticed that. That's how I tend to go off the rail. My monthly reflections, definitely my favorite video to film. I just get to chat with you and talk about life, either how amazing it is or how crappy it is. But I hope you guys enjoy my reflections as well and you look forward to them every month as I do. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Tell me how your Thanksgiving was, how your month was, how your life has been lately. I really want to know how you guys are doing. I think about you all the time. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you love life chats. I do those all the time. And if you did enjoy this video, then you might enjoy these videos as well.